Good afternoon and welcome to Countdown right here on Bloomberg Quinn. We're starting five minutes early. Lots of data points on the show, lots of conversations as well. I'm Neeraj Shah with me, uh, Devina and Navneet. And let's kick start uh, with a quick snapshot of what the markets are doing in the session today. Well, uh, the bank nifty is certainly leading the charge lower. But I must admit that today's move on the bank nifty is slightly different. And I'm starting with the bank nifty first today as, instead of the nifty because the movers that I want to talk about are largely in the banking space. So the bank nifty is down about 5%. And look at the cracks. It's not HDFC, HDFC Bank and uh, Bajaj Finance, not technically part of the bank nifty, but the financial space which are leading the charge downwards. In fact, yes, they are lower, but not dramatic. In fact, Bajaj Finance is in the green. But look at the losers. And they are the top losers on the nifty as well. ICICI Bank, Access Bank, Indescent Bank and State Bank of India. Uh, now, in, in a year and a half, two years ago, we used to make this distinction between retail-focused banks and corporate-focused banks. All of these have started making the retail focus as well, but they are the ones which are correcting. It's not the bluest of blue chips names, save for Kotak, which is down 5%, but it's got technical factors of its own because of the MSCI bit. Uh, Titan is under pressure as well amongst the top losers on the index today, down about 7%. There is weakness in JSW Steel. There is weakness in Maruti, and you'll hear from the management in just moments from now. And just very quickly amongst the gainers, it seems to be a bit of a pharma day today because Sipla as well as uh, Sun Pharma are in the green on the index. And some IT names like HCL Tech are also not doing all that bad. I must say, Devina, ITC is the other one, which has also gained quite substantially, up about six and a half. But good afternoon, Devina. How are the broader markets looking? Good afternoon, Neeraj. Broader markets are just about in tandem with what the, the rest of the market is looking like. But I must say that the advanced decline ratio is not pointing towards any uh, you know bigger direction this afternoon. So you have a six, 762 stocks advancing, 757 stocks that are declining at this point in time. Uh, you know, just to, before we go ahead, going ahead and taking a look at the mid cap index, I just want to take a look at India Bigs today because that has fallen off sharply. It's come to levels of 56. Now, remember, highs uh, were almost 80 for India Wicks in this, uh, you know, downturn. And now they're starting to cool off. And we spoke to Betri Subramanian in the morning, Neeraj, and he also highlighted that the first sign, uh, you know, if you want to start looking at creating a base, is that you start seeing the volatility coming off. Coming to the broader market space then, like you said, pharma as a pocket is doing well, and that's not just a factor of the large cap index. It's also something that we're seeing in the mid-tier mid basket. The likes of Lupin, Marks and Pharma, they're up in double digits, 10% of piece. Aside from that, Soba Developers is up about 9.5%. You've got the likes of Gale, which is up 7%. Uh, Apollo Hospitals, again, up 7%. Spark mm -hmm. is up 6.5%. So that's the kind of move that you're seeing within the pharma pocket. Aside from that, uh, Dredging Corp is uh, uh, up about 6.5%. ITC, that too, it's, it's in the larger names, but you already highlighted that. Loris Lab, Natco Pharma, National Fertilizer, as well as Fun Corp, Delta Corp. Delta Corp has been doing well, so that's holding out. And a Biocom too, within the pharma pack, is doing well. Edelweiss today, uh, you know, the last few days has been managing to hold up. What's not doing well is RBL Bank. And despite the management coming out in the conference call and saying that they've seen record high names, uh, they've also highlighted that deposits have suffered by about eight percent quarter on quarter, and that's something that's a function of the other private sector banks post the collapse of Yes Bank. Uh, Shiram Transport Finance, Equitas, Chola Fin, and now the financials look. But most important to see what's happening in the futures and options space. Namni, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Devina. Uh, well, uh, I think the only uh, solace uh, today will be once again. I think second day on the trot, broader markets are relatively outperforming the front line, which is giving you a sense that uh, there is selling which is coming into these large cap stocks and primarily the banking stocks. So Nifty Futures should come up on your screen. The open interest there has risen, giving you a sense that uh, um, there are some fresh short positions being taken even at current levels. I'll come to the levels that can be monitored uh, for the day, at least in the last uh, an, an hour of trading. But Nifty bank is the one where majority of the short positions right now are being taken. Open interest has surged over 20% Nifty Bank. Uh, remember on Wednesday we were talking 18,000 will be a good support, but we've already breached that mark. We are way, way below that 5% cut coming in there. You also highlighted India Wix. Now, surprisingly, of course, market senses when markets moves higher or lower, India Wix moves in the opposite direction. But remember, in the last three days, so it's the third day on the trot where India VIX is corrected. Wednesday, it was a correction of about 10%, and today, once again, we've corrected 6%. So as of now, 
from those highs of 86, it's corrected nearly 35 to 36 percent. It's a good sign. Reason being because the fear which the street was expecting due to coronavirus has already been factored in. And that's the reason why option prices, and remember, VIX is a function of option prices, IVs were really high. That started to cool off now. In terms of levels, then, uh, you've got the 8,000 put, of course, which is sitting with maximum open interest. There is a uh, addition of nearly six to seven lakh shares which has come in on that strike so that will be a key level to be watched to the downside so far we've protected that mark while on the call side 8200 is the mark where majority of the positions have been taken six lakh shares added there so 8000 to 82 at least is the range that you can watch out for today uh, pharma seems to be the flavor of the day all the nifty constituent pharma stocks are in green so but i'll still start out with torrent pharma which has seen significant amount of oi addition in today's session in fact last when i checked open interest was up over 50% in the stock too has given you good returns in today's session. Long position seen for this one and also for Sipla, which has risen in today's session. There also open interest is up about 15%. The other stock which was down 15%, huge amount of shorting was seen on Wednesday. That was Jindal Steel and Power. It's down another 6% despite of you know reporting record production and sales number for FY20. That stock is still dealing under pressure. It's down 6% and traders are still shorting even at these 52-week low uh, level mark near well, it wouldn't be a surprise to know that uh, car sales or vehicle sales across categories have come off. This shouldn't surprise anybody. Everybody anticipated this. In some cases, the falls have been more vicious than what was penciled in. The question, though, is, is it possible to predict when would normalcy return uh, in a scenario like this? Because this is unprecedented. Larry Fink of BlackRock said, that is something that he's not seen in his 44 years. But somebody who looks at autos very closely and is associated uh, uh, with the largest uh, automobile company in India, Marty Suzuki, Mr. Shashank Srivastava Johnson right now with his thoughts. One on the March monthly sales numbers, but two on the overall picture. Mr. Srivastava, thanks so much for joining in. You would have assumed that, I mean, you would have guessed that, I mean, I wouldn't want to talk only about the March numbers because we knew they were going to get hit. Uh, how do you view this current scenario and whether it's possible to make any kind of assessment about how long can this damage last? Yeah, so uh, let me quickly address the first part of the question, which is the, which is the March numbers and the uh, year-end numbers. So March numbers, uh, the industry went down actually by about 52.5%. Uh, and uh, about this uh, was about 47% down, which means that uh, we had a small gain in market share. Uh, or for April to March, the industry uh, has gone down by about 18%, uh, and uh, the Maruti market share uh, is just about 51%, which is the same as last year. So this is as far as the last year is concerned. On the other part of your question, which is going forward, what does it look like? Well, as you mentioned, it's an unprecedented situation. We really don't know how the consumer uh, is going to behave subsequent to the lockdown getting over. Uh, but we are working on all scenarios, and uh, we, we, we are looking at our response so that after the lockdown is over, hopefully on the 15th, then we can we get back to normal as far as both sales as, well as production is concerned. But yes, it's a negative, definitely. How much negative we are still uh, assessing, and I think in a few weeks' time it will be very clear how much uh, it negative it has been. Mm. We were talking to Prestige Estates, the real estate firm, uh, a little while back, and he was mentioning that while it's not an indicator, of course, but they got some uh, surprising luxury apartment inquiries and sales going. How, I mean, I'm guessing dealerships were largely closed, Mr. Shivastava, in this lockdown period as well. But any sense about uh, whether customers would be coming back with a bang. I know you mentioned that it's difficult to predict that, but I mean, when, when you guys do your boardroom meetings or uh, by, by, by teleconference, of course, what is it that you think about what will happen? Uh, 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 we are still assessing different situ scenarios, and there are some positives and negatives as far as uh, the demand pattern goes. Uh, just for your information, after the lockdown was opened in China, uh, there was a survey done among consumers, and consumers uh, surprisingly said that they are uh, the that the demand for uh, their demand for personal cars will actually go up because they will sort of uh, move away from public transport. So that was seen as a very positive for car sales. 
However, uh, as you know, cars, the, 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 the opposite viewpoint is that car sales in India at least is a discretionary purchase, which means that uh, you have to have a positive sentiment to get into car buying. And uh, that uh, uh, probably uh, will depend on how quickly the sentiment bounce back after the, uh, the, the lockdown is over. But we are preparing for uh, all scenarios. But one thing is, um, of course, uh, uh, very clear. To me personally, I see that uh, the replacement car buying towards the high end of the car market should go up, as well as the uh, the, the, the initial, uh, the, the additional car buying towards the lower end of the segment should go up. And I think um, uh, combined with the fact that uh, the first-time buyers, if they prefer personal transport, you can have a positive scenario, uh, or the positive side of the scenario also. So let's see and wait for some time. We are working on all types of combinations uh, for, for assessing what needs to be done after the lockdown. Hmm. So I can understand the lower end of the car, car market seeing that pickup, Mr. Shivastava. Just if you can explain, why would you expect the replacement car buying at the higher end to move up post the lockdown getting over? Yeah, so the replacement car buying this year in the exchange um, because uh, uh, of, uh, uh, like you were saying, for the real estate, the top end, uh, there seems to be some more inquiries there. Uh, you would have uh, probably, um, in, 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 in my estimate, uh, you, people who have uh, old cars, BS4 vehicles, etc., they might be uh, actually wanting to, uh, uh, to, to change over to new cars and uh, their. Uh, Indicate that the, the replacement car buying has been going up during the last two of the year, and I think that will accelerate further. Uh, as far as the additional car buying is uh, concerned, my estimate was because uh, uh, people might choose a personal uh, car as an additional buying from whatever, for example, somebody with college going kids or somebody who who who's, uh, uh, who's just joined a job or something might uh, today prefer to rather not take the personal transport, uh, rather not take the public transport, but go in for the, the vehicle. So the additional car buying also should uh, see if can be seen in the lower end of the city. You reckon, Mr. Srivastava, that if indeed, if indeed demand were to come back post the lockdown, the financing uh, equation will not be an issue? Will you reckon that will go ahead smooth? There's no reason to believe otherwise, but I'm just checking nevertheless. Yes, so uh, I think uh, there are, uh, so when I have uh, given you some positives, there are also, of course, uh, uh, a lot of negatives, including, as I just mentioned, the car being discretionary purchase. Uh, the sentiment has to be positive. So it's not just about the availability of finance, etc., but also senti in terms of sentiment also, it has to be positive for car buying to see an uptake. Uh, that's the negative side because after uh, the lockdown period, the system does get shaken and people take a lot of time to get into the uh, the sentiment again. But uh, coming to your point about financing, uh, I think financing for retail should not be an issue. Um, of course, on the inventory funding might be a different thing. So basically, in automobile, we have two financing. One is the financing on the retail side, which is about 80% of the total retail. And then there is a, a funding on the inventory side for the dealer, which is roughly about 90-95% of, uh, of the car uh, car working capital. So um, on, on, on the retail side, I think with the rollover happening and uh, the liquidity introduced uh, already in the system, I think that may not be an issue. But on the inventory funding side, yes, we need to have a quick churn of the inventory for dealers to be able to take the financing for the future. And that, I think, is the big problem that dealers are facing today. Mm. Okay. Uh, Mr. Shivastava, one final question really uh, with, I mean, I, I know consumer sentiment is almost nearly impossible to predict as to when that would turn. So I wouldn't ask you to second guess that, but I see a lot of uh, uh, brokerages kind of penciling in what the demand scenario could be like with the assumption that the lockdown gets called off on the 15th of April, and they predict a decline overall of about 1% or 2% for you, and you being the market leader might have the least dis, uh, decline in sales for FY21 or FY20. Would that be uh, a fair assessment, or do you think uh, even you are not in a position to be able to say that right now? So I think uh, the honest answer is uh, that uh, uh, I'm not in a position to say uh, that for the reasons I mentioned in detail, it's really part of our conversation. And uh, of 
course, analysts uh, have some way uh, by which they come to these uh, very exact uh, conclusions. But then, uh, while the conclusions are are, are uh, nearly always exact, but uh, also often they are wrong. Got it, sir. Sir, one final question. Um, I, I'm I'm guessing it's. Uh... I mean, for no fault of the company, but I'm just trying to assess out here that there are opposing forces at play. Uh, commodity costs would have come lower and that should be margin accretive. But I reckon that the cost of upkeeping the staff and giving salaries while sales are not on and then probably renewing or doubling up marketing efforts in order to, you know, in, in a poor sentiment scenario might all impact margins. Should we, should people anticipate uh, for the first six months of this of this current financial, a lower margin trajectory from car companies in general. Um, uh, again, very difficult at this point of time. It all depends on how quickly the retail bounce back. I think uh, it is very clear in our industry. If you have the volumes, then everything takes care. Uh, uh, every other uh, you know parameter takes care of itself. As far as the wages and uh, rentals are concerned, um, for the dealers, at least for our dealer partners, uh, we have transferred a lot of uh, cash uh, uh, amount to their dealer account very recently last week. So, so as to, uh, so as uh, the broken, the broken um, uh, chain of uh, cash flow, which has happened because the retail didn't happen because of the lockdown. At least that part uh, we are trying to take care of. And yes, we will continue to make investments in the market uh, for uh, for. So that uh, I mean, we are very, very much clear that we have uh, a responsibility as market leaders to, uh, to uh, sort of lead the way as far as uh, the bounce back after the lockdown is concerned. Great. Uh, Mr. Shivastava, I appreciate you taking the time out and speaking to us. Thanks so much and wish you all the very best. Thank you very much. Hi, this is in the month of March. Probably any company, for any auto company, will be not comparable to uh, March 2019 sales because of the shutdown in, in terms of production. Bringing in our market experts, then we've got uh, Pratesh Mehta joining us right now on the phone line. Kunal Rambia is also here with us to take us through the technical perspective on what are the levels that we need to keep in mind, as well as a few stock ideas that we can look at in these current market conditions. Uh, let me come to you, Pratesh, first. What is it that uh, one needs to look out for? Bank Nifty? Uh, the last few days, you know, has been led lower by the heavyweights, but it looks like now it's an all-round uh, move on the downside. Even likes of Axis, ICICI, Indescent are dragging the index. Yes, I agree with that. You know, Bank Nifty has been the major architect of, of current predicament of the index. And I think there is more to it. You know, this, this, this fall won't subside around current levels. Now, we'll just go to the chart, ratio chart of Bank Nifty against Nifty. And it has broken below multiple support zone. You know, uh, this, this this ratio line was pretty much ha holding pretty much strong around uh, around 2014 levels, but it has broken below it. And I think I think there could be more downside pressure on the ratio. It means the bank Nifty is likely to underperform going forward as well. So I I don't want to sound um, uh, uh, over dramatic. But you know, uh, it is down by 5.5%. Maybe next few days, you know, we, I won't be surprised if Bank Nifty goes down to 15.5 levels or 16,000 odd levels as well. You know, there could be more pain going ahead. I was just going to the other indices as well, and I don't see any other signs of strength coming in. Financial services, they are down. Uh, Nifty Bank, as, as I mentioned earlier, Nifty Private Banks are down. Nifty PUC Bank, which were relatively holding ground, even they are suffering now. Uh, the, the, the ones who were standing, uh, standing strong and showing signs of relative strength were the pharma. And from, uh, from, uh, you know, or from Wednesday onwards, even they are showing signs of profit booking. So I, I'm really struggling to find out where could be the hide, hiding place. And I think, I think there could be more pain on downside, both on Nifty and Bank Nifty. That's a, a call coming in and the big, big dent that's coming in Nifty Bank again, five and a half. This is the call. Uh, uh, Kunal, let's talk about your index levels. So, you know, uh, great afternoon. So, if I look at the Nifty and Bank Nifty overall performance, so, you know, on 24th of March, Nifty made a bottom of around 7,500. On 27th, it made a high of 9,030. And right from there, we are seeing a decline on all the indices. So, if I take the retracement level of this entire fall, so 61.8, which is a golden ratio on Nifty, which is turning up to say around 8,075. 
and on the bank nifty that 78.6 percent turns out to be around 17200 to 300 kind of zone so which is fair at the present level itself and on the intraday front if i try to look at the formations there is a falling wedge formation i'm not declining the fact that markets can't fall further but yes this is the zone from where there is a potential chance of turning around and supporting to that we have a wix which is coming down drastically along with this so fair enough to assume that if market were to make a bottom here itself these are the zones so on nifty i am looking out for say 8100 to 8075 kind of zone and on bank nifty i am looking out for say around 17000 to 17300 kind of zone if these two levels on both the indices are taken care of i think a, a decent bounce can be expected from this level and if there is a further follow up through selling from this level then yes the previous bottom can definitely be taken out okay let's hope these levels get defended but for the time being keep an eye on all the banking stocks city bank is by the way down 5.5% icici bank is your top loser losing about 9% axis bank indicin spi you name it and all of them have given up uh, Uh, you know, uh, they're they're down between six to ten percent as of now. So very quickly, I just want to get a sense on individual stock strategies if our techies have. Pratish, any stocks that you're keeping your radar on? Any strategy that you want to share with our viewers? Yes, you know, I mentioned about the FMG space, uh, which which is you know which was showing signs of strength earlier, but you no know, profit booking is quite visible now. The leaders of the previous rally, HUL, uh, Britannia, you know, we there was some sort of you know uh, respite in this space, uh, especially HUL. It, it was outperforming. I, I think now we are done with the outperformance. Uh, we are likely to see profit booking coming in in uh, FMCG and especially HUL. If you go through the pointed figure chart, uh, you know we can see negative column reversal, which is followed by double bottom sell. It, it tells me that you know uh, I won't be surprised the stock goes down by eight to ten percent from year on. I'm expecting a, a move towards eighteen fifty, eighteen twenty in next couple of days. Okay, um, that's it. Well, for you, very quickly, Kunal, your individual stock ideas for this afternoon. Yeah, so you know, I am looking out for Rail Vikas Nigam. That counter fell down from twenty two, twenty two and half to almost ten rupees. Today is in it's in upper circuit, but the stock is trading at fifteen point two. So you know, this can be a good fundamental stock along with trading pick. Uh, right at the uh, current market price, we can go think of going long with the target of twenty two and half to twenty three. That's the first counter, and the second is National Aluminium. Again, you know that I have been recommending since couple of weeks. A decent zone of around 27 to 29. Presently, it's trading at 28.1. So we can think of accumulating that counter also. If someone wants to play on a momentum basis, wait for the trigger of 30 to be taken out, and you know we can expect a faster uh, move on the upside. But these are the two counters which I'm looking out from long side. And Reliance, you know, due to crude effect yesterday, what we saw in the late evening, uh, today it gap up open and came down substantially. So on the lower side, below 1050, it may move down to 900. But say about uh, 1090, I expect the counter to reach to 1250 to 1300 mark in the time to come. Okay. Okay. And uh, from our technical expert, but it's, it's also time to bring in a fundamental guest on board. We've got Yogesh Mehta of Yield Maximizers joining us now. Hi, Yogesh. Uh, good afternoon. Well, uh, clearly these are tough times to be in. Uh, there are days when you're up four percent, and the very next day, index loses, uh, you know, of about four or five percent. I think it's become a new normal now for the last one month. Uh, one stock I've been, you know, looking at among the Nifty constituents, and for the longest time, uh, we've been saying that valuations are. Pretty cheap, and I'm talking about IT series. I mean, last seven days it's given you good returns. Today, also when markets are weak, even on Wednesday, for that matter, it was up and about. Uh, would you look at this one clearly on valuation basis? ITC at these levels. Oh, hi, Navneet. Good afternoon. We are talking about ITC. Yes, Yogesh. ITC. Yeah. Okay, Navneet. Then uh, for ITC, I would say that so far I was negative when it was 250, 270 because the contribution from the non 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 uh, food business. Was almost uh, 54, 55%. But uh, considering comparison in comparison to the other FMCG within the sector uh, con constitutions, uh, where constituents it is available at right now with 10 rupees APS post corporate rate tax, uh, corporate tax rate cut. It is available at uh, hardly 17, 18 times P multiple with the current price of 179, even though it has moved up by 7.5%. So that way, I would say that yes, it would be a good portfolio stock for those who are willing to. Uh, bet on the defensive names, and probably again from here to make 20-25% uh, returns 
over one one and a half or maybe two years, which is a decent enough in this uh, interest rate scenario of six percent, then yes, definitely one can go for that uh, ITC name. And uh, in such scenario where uh, the entire BFSI sector is uh, a, a has uh, you know given a, a, a sweep on all the prices. And the index Nifty constitu constituents are also going down. Those who are non non BFSI, I would say then we will have to look at some of the names where you know uh, not to hide behind the bush, but at least to capital protection and to park your capital. So that way again, uh, it will be a good a good uh, stock to have that as a portfolio stock. Mind you, we might actually have a. Uh, I mean, because we have a long weekend, we have, and the rest of the world markets are not looking all that great. It might be difficult to have those long positions uh, currently as well. But this is obviously investing from a slightly longer term perspective. Since we are talking about winners, Yogesh, uh, good afternoon. Are you tempted to buy any of the PSUs? Because uh, as somebody mentioned day before yesterday, when valuations are low, stocks yeah. find a reason to move up. Uh, would a gale or a or a BPCL or ONGC be those companies that somebody can take a small two three five percent portfolio weightage exposure yeah. to. Yeah, sure, Neeraj. Good afternoon. And uh, this time, if we are talking about PSUs, then uh, definitely there are certain pockets which I which I like most. Where ONGC, though it is exhibited now at seventy rupees or maybe near to seventy rupees, I think it is a lot more value in that. Even if, it, if there is a replacement of uh, asset. Or maybe a total replacement cost, then it is available at almost uh, free to the investors. Now, even if you don't consider five rupees dividend every year, forget the dividend yield, but at least uh, you are getting as a shareholder value. There is an inherent intrinsic value at this price, and if somebody wants to park at PSUs, definitely seventy rupees will give twenty thirty percent return in a year's time. Uh, similarly, I uh, have gone through Gale, but I didn't like much. But uh, the other name is uh, so far I was bearish on the oil marketing company. But since uh, crude prices have gone down to substantially at uh, 25, 27 dollar, uh, now I am looking at uh, IOC. It is available at 80 rupees, and then also offers a great value to the investors. And uh, from the current price, marketing margin are gonna be uh, gonna, gonna be very much limited. But uh, the throughput is not that much deteriorated, even though EVs are yet to come. So I think uh, this will have uh, better days again from here. In such kind of a bleak scenario, I think if somebody wants to park their money in the safe uh, heaven, then this could be the one where we will not see any type of uh, uh, decline further from current levels. It is highly unlikely. Okay, okay, got that. The other pocket that's the most active space right now in today's session, at least, and that's the pharma space. A few names that have got some fundamental news uh, around it, one being Aurobin the Pharma. We'll, we'll get you an analyst to dissect uh, what's the way forward for some of these pharma companies. But Aurobin the Pharma won the deal with Sandoz that fallen through, mutually fallen through on the back of delay of approval coming in from the US FTC. And then you have Stipla, which has announced a successful completion of phase three cl clinical study of uh, Advir. That's a $2.9 billion market in the US. And that's a big opportunity for Stipla. Yogesh, Quick word on any of these two stocks. Uh, yeah, Devina, good afternoon. I think uh, CIPLA is, they're working for this, uh, these APIs and uh, uh, the product for a long, long time. This is phase three, and this does not mean they will have uh, that USFDA clearance for launch into US. So I will say that uh, rather than getting into CIPLA, Aurobindo, where the Sendos deal has been called off, uh, mutually, of course. But I think uh, then that $900 million is a saving for the company, and that can be utilized in maybe in terms of buyback or any other special dividend in a, in a short span by the company. So I, at that level, I think at the, uh, a reasonable valuation or I think fair valuation of almost uh, 10, 12, 12 times P multiple or window is available. When in SIP is at still 18, 19 uh, P multiple. So I would say though it is a clinical trial and third phase has been cleared, with a good uh, market size in U.S., but considering the U.S. economy and the uh, developments, I think uh, Euro uh, or the Pharma would be a much better place and much better pick. All right, joining us right now is Vishal Manchanda. He is here to take us through his analysis. Uh, he tracks pharma really closely in his analysis of all of these individual companies and what place they individually hold, as well as the prospects for the pharma space as a whole. Uh, Vishal, thanks very much for taking out the time. You know, there's a split camp between those uh, who, who who think that uh, this $900 million that would have gone into the Sandoz deal is a big saving for Aurobindo. 
Well, there's the other uh, camp which believes that this would have been a big opportunity uh, lost now for Aurobindo Pharma. That being one. And then the other one being for CIPLA. Obviously, they're not going to start marketing immediately, but this is getting them one step closer into their entry into the U.S. markets for Advil because the generic, the generic drugs along the lines of Advil are still selling uh, like hotcakes in the U.S. Right. Uh, so, uh, going to this Aurobindo deal, which was called off, I think uh, I review this uh, call off as uh, favorable for Aurobindo Pharma, uh, largely because the deal was uh, structured such that the cash flows were come, supposed to come up front. So, basically, the the portfolio that Aurobindo acquired represented a, represented a declining sales portfolio. So there, there was a material delay in the execution of the deal. A, a six-month delay has happened, and the portfolio was losing value. The other thing was, uh, had the deal been terminated, had the deal been executed, it would have added significant financial leverage to Aurobindo. And particularly at this juncture, when Aurobindo has got several compliance issues at its plant, and, and there is global uncertainty around uh, COVID-19, it's better to avoid financial leverage at, at such a juncture. So basically, I view this uh, as a more favorable outcome of the in the current scenario. Hmm. What about CIPLA? So uh, generic adware having completed phase three trial is uh, is just uh, is just the first step. Uh, the larger hurdle in getting an approval is a very large, very long review timelines. So we have seen uh, competitors uh, taking three to four years post filing uh, for getting an approval. So we have a company called Vectura uh, out of UK, which has uh, filed for a generic copy, uh, I think more than three years now, and they are still struggling with an approval. So uh, this obviously is a positive uh, uh, development, but we'll have to be aware of that extended timelines that it can take to get an approval for such a complicated drug. Okay. Uh, the other thing is um, for the pack as a whole currently, you know, there are some companies that have uh, received uh, uh, US FDA observations while the others inspections have been closed and therefore the stocks have been reacting accordingly. But within the pharma space currently, Vital, uh, what is the best place stock that you would advise to be in? Uh, I think among the large names, uh, Sun Pharma is the one that I would uh, pick up at this point uh, because Sun Pharma is building a business that's, uh, that would be immune from uh, the problems that we have seen in the last few years, so price erosion in the U.S. So they are trying to build a branded portfolio in the U.S. and they have already reached a very significant scale in building this business through. Uh, so none of the other Indian peers have been able to execute uh, to that that scale. So the importance of having a branded business is that it is immune from uh, price erosion, and it basically you can look forward to secular growth on that business. Uh, while being uh, being in a generic bit generic business, you need to keep uh, fighting erosion in your base speed, waste portfolio and get. So the newer drugs that you get approval for just uh, offset the base business erosion and you remain wherever uh, you are in terms of the scale of the business. So structurally, I think Sun Pharma is shaping up well in terms of uh, long-term growth prospects. Okay, and Sun Pharma too, by the way, is quite active in today's session. As I uh, we mentioned at the start of the show, all uh, pharma nifty constituents at least are showing good returns. But uh, besides that, I uh, just want to pull up the intraday chart of Aurobindo. I know we've discussed that stock, but it's uh, considerably recovered from those lower levels. I think it touched 333, and now it is trading with cuts about 3% at levels of 380. As Vishal already highlighted, it could be a positive sign if the deal is called off because the leverage will get reduced. Uh, Vishal, hi, good afternoon. This is uh, Navneet. The other pharma stock I want to talk about is these laboratories. Now, before uh, you know, COVID-19 crisis hit our markets and the market started to tumble. This was one of the outperformers in the pharma pack. These laboratories. Does that feature in your list among your top picks in this space? Uh, so uh, basically, I don't have a coverage on the stock, uh, but. Uh... Uh, as such, DVs has been uh, the best stock in the space if you look at uh, 
the last uh, say 10 years uh, they continue to clock secular growth lately they have announced about some uh, supply disruptions but i think this would be temporary and uh, doesn't really change the fundamentals uh, of the stock Okay, uh, Vishal, just one uh, last question on Torrent Pharma. And the reason I'm asking is there's a lot of uh, uh, trading activity around the stock today. It's up on the future side also. There are a lot of, uh, uh, looks like there are a lot of long positions being taken. In terms of fundamentals for Torrent Pharma, I know last month sometime around they announced they would be raising funds as well and they've they repaid their NCDs recently. Uh, how is this one stacking up among all the other pharma companies? Uh, so Torrent is a preferred name among investors, uh, just because they have very, uh, they have been very disciplined about the capital allocation. Uh, so they they have prioritized capital capital allocation to the right places. They have a very large India business, and they have been uh, the most they have been most aggressive in terms of building this India business. So they have a US business, but they don't they haven't gone uh, uh, gone too aggressive into building this business where where most companies have actually faltered. Uh, so they have taken the right decisions in terms of uh, allocating capital and India business becoming significantly larger for them and continuing the continuing to contribute to uh, uh, low teens growth. So company will continue to throw cash flows, which, which is uh, very important, uh, uh, which has actually become very important now. For investors, they prefer to be in balance sheets that uh, keep generating cash rather than uh, be into stocks which are leveraged and have continue to need to, and they need to continue to borrow more to build business. So this is one stock which can generate cash for its own business and continue to grow. Okay, and it's looking pretty good in today's session. Uh, Vishal, we leave it in that note. Appreciate you joining us and taking us through your views on the pharma companies and a pack as a whole, uh, which is the flavor of the day. But um, on the other side, you've got NBFCs, which are reeling under pressure. Stocks like Sriram Transport, that's fallen 16%. It's also your top f &O loser for the day. You've got Chola Manlam Investment as well, which has fallen about 12 to 13%. Kunal, before we thank you, I just want your view on these NBFCs, which have uh, corrected quite sharply today. You initiate a fresh shot anywhere within this space? So, no, no, uh, if, I, if I try to look at the Sriram transport, say, for example, now the magnitude of fall in a day itself is so faster that if someone wants to really short, then needs to have uh, the deep pocket to keep the stop loss also. So, yes, there is a more downside definitely remaining. The room on the lower side is much lower, much open. So, uh, Sriram transport can be shorted with the stop loss of, say, 595 and with the target of, say, 400. But one needs to keep one thing in mind that due to volatility, the stop loss may get triggered out on intraday. One needs to wait for the closing of such counters to come. But again, uh, at this level, on such high volatility, I would not really advise anyone to go short because the structure is definitely weak, but the risk reward ratio at this part of time is not really favorable. Uh, we leave it at that, Kunal. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, you know, we are still watching the markets closely, 2.5% lower on the Nifty Day, 8,000. And if we, in the next half an hour, see the selling pressure worsen, could reach 8,000 on the downside. And then remember, again, a truncated week, an extremely truncated week, just three trading sessions next week, as Monday and Friday both are holidays. So watch out for that. And the Nifty Bank, too, which is around about 5.5%. Um, we'll start taking your uh, queries now. I've been getting a lot of queries from our viewers as well. Just want to start by taking a query from Neil Patel. He is asking for a fundamental call on Muthut Finance. Yogesh, since you're here with us, and since we've already seen uh, you know, some commentaries coming in from Manapuram Finance with regards to the disbursements online and the payments, 40% payments are also happening. So they're not too worried. What would the call be on some of these uh, gold financiers and Muthut in particular? Yogesh? Uh, hi. Uh, regarding this uh, gold finance, I think uh, the gold prices are very much stable, so there should not be any worry. And the last quarter number, Q3 number for Muthus Finance was just fantastic. So, EM growth is also uh, sustainable, uh, is growing at a sustainable uh, growth rate. And I believe that uh, the profitability will be in line with expectation for at least a Q4 number is a concern because the next year would be too difficult to predict. 
so as far as the stability is there in the lending business they are into i think uh, that should be they uh, it should be a good rate for 600 rupees if anybody is having in a portfolio stock and uh, stock has already corrected from 950 odd all time high to 600 so that correction has happened so one should hold on to that and they have raised uh, fund via ncd also so they they have repaid uh, uh, some part uh, part of that also so that way it shows that financial condition for the company and balance sheet both are running uh, very strong okay got that next query is from yogesh bhat tech he wants technical view on renuka sugar shri renuka sugars uh, pratesh you want to take this one shri renuka yeah the way the mid are falling apart <laughs> i think i think we should not get into this counter if someone is having this stock i think that there could be more pain on downside there is no need to get this counter because if i was just going to the mid cap uh, 100 against nifty 50 ratio chart and uh, i think there is more pain and in, in fact you know uh, even if we get a pullback in the nifty mid cap index in next two days which is bound to take place but uh, this space is going to underperform the nifty index So there is no point to of getting carried away by any kind of momentum intraday rally which we have in mid cap stock in fact that would be right opportunity to get out of it all right i think we have a, a one last query that we have time for and that comes in uh, from uh, yogesh bhat and i think okay i've already taken his query so maybe i'll take somebody else's query and that is uh, divya jain lockdown impact on home loan companies so housing finance companies yogesh a quick view and will you at all invest in any of the housing finance companies uh see overall housing finance companies we have some ba- bad days a- ahead for at least for next uh, one or two quarters because of the slowdown impact and overall it is a lending business where uh, the banks and nbfcs will be much more stringent in terms of uh, disbursing loan and real estate sectors are also going slow so i think housing finance companies are not the right one to uh, have a investment into so uh, at least if one can avoid then definitely i would say i would say that uh, definitely they should avoid the housing finance companies into investment okay we leave it at that yogesh thank you so yeah. much for joining thank us you. in this Pleasure. Hour. Uh, we'll have Mayuresh Joshi also joining us uh, in just a few moments to take us through his fundamental opinion. But uh, Neeraj, I mean, the, the shape of the market uh, still at this point, 20 minutes to go for closing doesn't look all that great. It doesn't. I just want to very quickly before we get in our next fundamental guest, just mark what the European markets are up to 1.3 percent lower for the FTSE. DAX down about 0.7 percent. CAC about 1.32 percent. And as we said. the european futures are indicating a start which is in the red so not looking all that great either as we speak of course uh, axis bank has now overtaken icici bank as the top loser down about 9% icici bank still down about 8 8.2% and a clutch of other names some of the well performing names like asian paints as well have now taken it uh, taken a hit today um, off substantially down about 5% in the session Uh, the name though just before we get into funda guys pritesh the name to talk about is kotak bank after that sharp drop that we saw day before yesterday another 5% shaved off today where is the nearest possible support for kotak bank for kotak bank yeah in fact uh, you know i have been uh, quite vocal regarding financial services and nifty bank stock i think uh, you know there is there is more to come you know i'm Sorry again to to again sound too bearish, but you know th- th- these stocks uh, they had a, a a strong rally. In fact, there was a period uh, from 2018 onwards where they were the leading market. They they were leading the market. When you look at Kotak Bank, HDFC Bank, and I think we are entering into a phase where these leaders won't be in play for a long period of time. So they will turn out to be under performers. And I, once this mess is cleared. you know one some other stocks some other sectors would turn uh, emerge into a leader and they will take the market higher but i think uh, for next one and a half years at least you know i'm expecting the bank bank heavy uh, the, the bank biggies uh, to underperform and i won't be surprised if kotak bank goes below the 1000 mark also okay well uh, by the way it's not just banks the nbfcs too as we highlighted in the market open have been taken to the cleaners with shriram transport Chola Finance, Max Financial, Equitas Holdings, you name it, uh, each of these are in the red. Uh, here out from Vetri Subramanian as well uh, about whether he views this crisis as an opportunity. He used the term his years of experience and the few past cycles that he's seen a number of times in this interaction to suggest that maybe it's time to start looking at some quality names. Listen in. 
those who were there in the markets in 2000, 2001 or 2008, 2009 would again remember that all you got by trying to watch all the news flow and what was happening in other markets was sleepless nights and going completely cross-eyed and bonkers trying to, you know, react to all those data points. So my suggestion is, you know, don't look at that. There will be correlations. This is a hyper market. Uh, remember that, you know, the reason why there is money invested in stocks or other asset classes is because people are parking their surplus cash over there for some long-term objective. Now, when you've got a disruption of the kind that you're having in the economies today, people are liquidating some of their investments to get cash back into their core activities. So when you hear about a sovereign wealth fund which might need to liquidate assets, it's because now there is a call being made from the core. This is normal. But the point being that those who have the ability, who have the wherewithal to make use of this opportunity should do it. And don't try to watch 20 news channels and 24 by 7 uh, you know, news flow across the world to take that determination. There is only one cycle which eventually matters in terms of your long-term investment outcome, and that's the valuation uh, uh, cycle. Domestic institutions have been really supportive. So every time you've seen a big FII number, that's almost been matched by an equal large DII uh, uh, purchase. That's true. And uh, the, you know, that goes back to the fact that, you know, I think the SIP pipeline has proved to be quite, uh, uh, you know, robust so far. Um, I think all of us in the industry have been reaching out to investors to sort of handhold them and encourage them to stay the course. So I do think the ETF flows, uh, the SIP flow is staying the course at this point. Um, I'm also seeing a lot of the ETF money from PFs, etc staying the course. Uh, there will be some investors who have to liquidate simply, as I said, because, you know, asset classes are the source of liquidity for those who are facing a challenge in their core business activity or for that matter in running their households. So some of that is bound to happen. But I think the SIP flow remains encouraging and that will continue to support the uh, domestic markets to some extent. But again, you know, these things keep changing over time, you know, 25, 26 years of watching FII inflows in the market. The the fact remains that except for three years, uh, FIs have actually been net positive in Indian markets for you know 24 out of those 27 years. Whereas if you look at domestic flows, they were very, very irregular till about 2014, and then we've seen a change. So I would hope that you know the next decade would continue to see domestic flows being robust, but I would not write off the foreign inflows as yet. All right. Uh, the other point being, uh, now that we have uh, seen these erratic moves with regards to funding, fund activity, uh, from a market standpoint, uh, what is the one or two key variables that you will be watching out for? You already spoke about valuations, but anything else that one needs to monitor to, to figure out whether or not this particular, uh, uh, you know, issue is going to form a base. It's starting to form its base may not be able to call the bottom, but it, the, the, the severity is petering off. You know, sure, that's a great question. And, you know, historically, I think what we've seen over time uh, is that typically when you see this kind of a spike in the market or rather a fall in the market, what actually spikes is volatility. And typically you get to a point where initially volatility tends to remain very high. It still is quite high. But over a period of, you know, days, weeks, months, you start to see the market volatility start to, you know, peter off quite a bit. That has typically been a good indication of the fact that, you know, the market sort of trying to, uh, or uh, let's say the more hyper participants have exited the market and the market is starting to find its feet. I won't necessarily call it bottoming, but uh, certainly a that the hyper volatile participants have exited and stocks in a sense are now in the hands of people who are willing to think a little bit more long term. So I think from that point of view, volatility coming down normally a good signal. Uh, the second thing, obviously, from more uh, economy and timeline point of view, we, not, we need to get past the lockdown. We need to see how normalcy will come back. Normalcy is not going to be the flip of a switch. Uh, it's going to be a gradual process of understanding how we can move back towards some sense of normalcy normality that we had in the early part of March. Uh, and I think as far as the economy is concerned, the historical indicators which have indicated consumer confidence coming back is the trend in consumer durable purchases and auto purchases. And increase in credit normally means the, in, uh, the economy is getting lubrication. And that's again a lead signal that you will start to see economic activity pick up. 
All right, uh, markets are uh, holding on. I'll say we've not breached, uh, you know, that level of eight thousand. So uh, the selling pressure, which has been there, I think, since the start of the session today, has been sustained. We've not uh, gone further lower than eighty fifty. I guess eighty seventy four currently on Nifty Nifty Bank at levels of seventeen thousand two hundred and twenty four. We've got Mayuresh Joshi of William O'Neill who joins us right now on the show. Hi, Mayuresh. Uh, good afternoon, and thanks a lot for joining us. I think one stock which uh, a lot of markets Market participants today have been highlighting is NIT Tech. It's been quite weakish in the last two or three sessions, and today it's fallen maybe on the news that British Airways, which happens to be their one of the biggest clients, by the way, is laying off its employees. And if I'm not mistaken, Mayuresh, this was the darling of the markets within the space in the last one year or two. How would you approach this if somebody is holding the stock of NIT Tech in their portfolio? Afternoon, Navneet. Uh, no, clearly, I think if you probably look at the business segments that NIT Tech caters to, uh, aviation, insurance, uh, I think all these spaces are uh, the spaces which have got hit uh, the most. Specifically, I think the aviation sector itself. Uh, so I think the order flows that probably come through from this sector at this point of time, uh, and the expectations of all the different sub segments, as I mentioned earlier as well, uh, I think there seems to be some amount of disconnect on how the entire order flows will pan out over the next few quarters. Uh, Now, in that scenario itself, uh, if you're probably looking at weak orders coming through and discretionary spending not increasing, uh, you've got uh, issues at hand because the existing order book might be able to have revenue visibility for the next few quarters. Uh, but what after that? I think it's going to be a very slow and gradual process uh, in terms of limping back for the industry as a whole. Uh, and therefore, yes, I think the sectors that it caters to and the expectations of uh, the currency. All the currency realization hit that the stock can have, along with uh, the trickle-down effect in terms of the pressures on EBIT, EBIT margins being played out, uh, and the concentration of uh, the top 10 clients in terms of the overall revenue itself. But uh, I think this is uh, these are some of the concerns that are probably weighing out uh, very, very justifiably in terms of how the stock price has moved for NIT. And that you know, it, it remains to be seen how a lot of these organizations behave, or rather, their clients. Considering there there could be layoffs due to COVID-19 crisis, not just here. I'm talking worldwide, and which could have impact on uh, you know certain players. Uh, there will be some collateral damage that could be seen. But uh, Mayuresh, anything specific? We've got the auto sales number, and it was a given fact. You know, March would be a terrible, terrible month for all these companies. But anything which still stood out for you? Any auto company, auto bank that you're looking at closely? No, no. So clearly, I think yes, you're absolutely right. I think the numbers were expected to be very, very soft uh, in terms of the entire transitionary effect taking uh, place from BS4 to BS6. Uh, but what has probably transpired at this point of time, and looking at uh, the way the NBFCs have got battered down, I think the entire demand supply dynamics uh, are going to be a very, very key factor for the sector itself. Uh, so, so for the OEM players, whether it's four wheelers, two wheelers. Uh, Farm equipment manufacturers. Uh, I think there's going to be a painful quarter to come. Uh, so I think the earnings readjustment is something that the street will clearly have to do. For FY20, largely, I think it was uh, a return off year for the auto sector as a whole. But as the pain elongates and as the demand dynamics come back uh, very, very slowly for the sector as a whole over the next two quarters, uh, I think it's going to be a very, very painful period. Uh, the second element also is that with BS6 coming into account, I think the price increases are going to be very, very evident, uh, and whether that has some amount of deferment uh, when the demand cycle itself will remain very, very weak. Uh, I think both an earnings. Uh, Uh, disappointment expected to come through and continue for the better part of FY21, uh, along with expectations of demand recovery uh, uh, expected to take uh, a few quarters more. I think it's a double whammy kind of an effect for auto companies. Auto angst obviously will react to how the autos uh, or the OEMs will behave. A large offsetting part only probably happens from the replacement market itself, but that is not sufficient enough, in my opinion, to probably have an overriding clue to how the earnings will play out, which will also can remain very, very soft. So I'm remaining very, very cautious for auto auto angst. Valuations have become very, very attractive, but uh, have they become absolute buys at this level, considering the backdrop in terms of an earnings disappointment? I think it's better to wait out. Uh, For for the quarters numbers, see how the management commentary is and how the landscape probably looks uh, uh, for for a majority of these players going forward for a bit. Yeah, absolutely, Mayuresh. Uh, valuations, of course, have corrected and they've corrected across the board. 
outside autos as well, but it remains to be seen whether one can take a bet on valuation basis right now. Look at Mothers and Sumi, one of the marquee companies, it's trading at levels of 50, 55. That's corrected sharply from those levels of 200 to where it is right now. But one nifty stock I want to pull up is Titan, which has fallen to almost 7 to 8% right now. Pratesh, come in on the charts on Titan at 860-62. Would you take any fresh bet on the downside? Day's high was, by the way, 930 on Titan. Yes, this stock uh, has moved uh, very, very volatile in, in, in last few days. And I think that, that that could be more pressure on downside. I'm expecting the way the, the charts are shaping up. Uh, I think it, it is not done today. There could be follow-on selling in, ne in next few days also. See, if you look at the overall chart structure, we had a positive reverse on pointed figure chart that failed to sustain for a long period of time. And, and thereafter, it soon made a you know, bearish candle a bearish uh, pointer figure, uh, you know, pattern also. And now it is it's likely to move towards the mark of 820, 810 in the next two days. All right. Uh, we leave it at that. Uh, actually, Pratesh, before we let you go, let's uh, get your closing uh, thought and closing stock of the day as well. It's going to be a truncated week. So would you like to take any position to carry forward into next week? I think, see, uh, in case we get a pullback, you know, from because of some uh, positive global cues, if any, but the rallies are, are the rallies will be sold into. That is what we have seen last few days. Because even if market momentum on the upside is there for uh, for a few days, it fails to sustain. So I think ra uh, selling on rally should be the right approach. And uh, we have figured out some space, something like auto, mid cap, you know, uh, and and something like FMCG. You know, FMCG is showing signs of fresh weakness. So th this space is going to underperform. We have uh, discussed about the uh, banking also. So I think finding out the relative weakness and the stocks which are showing relative weakness would be the right way to approach the market rather than going uh, going into the pullback rather than buying the stocks. Okay. Pratesh, we'll let you go on that No, Thank you so much for joining Thanks. in this afternoon. And have a great weekend. Thanks. All right, Mahiresh, uh, you know, just coming on some of these metal companies now, you know, we spoke to the management of JSPL and I want your opinion on, on metals in general and how do you think now that China is getting back on stream, is this going to be an added advantage uh, for companies that are exporting? The likes of JSPL have said that in this period of a slowdown, they've actually not seen any damage. Exports have gone up and they're managing pretty well. Yeah, to a certain extent, uh, the Vini, I think a few legs of the metal space uh, might still hold up. Uh, but I think the overall demand contraction, because the rest of the world probably still remains in limbo with lockdowns and shutdowns. Uh, and again, I think the recovery that one really expects uh, is going to be very, very shallow. So I think the demand contraction uh, is, is a stark reality of, uh, of, of what we need to believe, uh, where uh, earnings and GDP hits uh, are assumed to be taking a big knock over the next few quarters. Uh, now look at the LME realizations for uh, metals, whether it's Paris or non-Paris, I think they've uh, actually crashed uh, down. Uh, and even if input costs uh, have come off, and though to a certain extent input costs have actually gone up over the past few months, uh, whether it's iron ore, coking coal with uh, an iron content of more than 62, which is the most premium variety, I think I'm expected to see volumes probably remaining uh, at, at subdued levels. Uh, with realizations coming off, I think the uh, the obvious operating leverage that uh, metal companies need to create, uh, that element probably might be missing. Uh, now if you pan out the domestic demand and the global demand at this point of time, I think export markets, a few of the markets might still hold up. But a large element of uh, uh, the export markets will still remain soft uh, for the next few months. Uh, domestically, again, I think uh, there will be expected demand coming through. But again, I think after this quarter, we're probably looking at uh, uh, the monsoon season coming through. So yes, I think this quarter, there might be some element in terms of stocking uh, and expectations of execution improving. But how much does that offset uh, uh, the, the fall in realizations and uh, subdued volumes? I think that is uh, a matter to be asked. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, there are uh, some pain points uh, for the sector as a whole, whether it's ferrous or non-ferrous. Uh, let's look at what else. We've analyzed the large caps quite a bit. Mahiresh, good afternoon, uh, Neeraj here. Uh, this pain that we're seeing, not unexpected, of course, at uh, the NBFC space in the broader markets as well. I mean, strong franchisees, I think, was Morgan Stanley or one of the other brokerages which spoke about the franchise strength of Sridhar Transport being so strong. But that stock is down. Max, despite the deal being done, down about 13%. Chola, uh, 
extremely strong franchise generally is down about 13 percent in what this is this is what money leaving left right center and not seeing any buyers and are you tempted into any of these so after the mirage no again uh, as i said uh, valuations uh, like the auto auto and space have become extremely attractive for the nbfc universe as a whole but again i think a couple of issues which are uh, expected to plague the earnings uh, trajectory for nbfc is uh, a i think the demand outlook itself uh, like uh, for the rest of the universe uh, if you're seeing lockdown shutdowns i think uh, how is the loan growth and the demand expected to play out for nbfc's uh, uh, overall over the next few months uh, the second element obviously is the asset quality pressures on their balance sheet uh, so with delinquencies uh, specifically in terms of the unsecured book uh, or even in terms of uh, the microfinance book or the book related to a lot of these uh, uh, financiers uh, specifically for the global markets uh, i think if there is any scope or any hint uh, of of uh, some delinquency aspects being raised uh, i think the asset quality issues come back to the fore uh, the third obviously is the mismatch in terms of uh, the bond repayments uh, which again can cause some amount of distress uh, in terms of cash inflows outflows for a few nbfcs which are probably highly levered leveraged at this point of time so i think one really needs to balance out uh, the better rated nbfcs from uh, uh, the not so better rated nbfcs at this point of time yes valuations have become very very attractive but the landscape itself is looking a little bit patchy yes the market conditions are such that i think uh, the price itself is indicating uh, the kind of damage that it is done but i think good quality nbfcs i think should be kept on the watch list uh, as the numbers come out i think uh, and as this pandemic gets over over the next few weeks uh, i think these better rated nbfcs will be the first to bounce back very very sharply over the next few months very quick 30 second view if you can uh, do you track balrampur chini fundamentally it's been on a roll the last 5 days Oh, yes i do and again i think if you probably look at the dynamics for the sector as a whole uh, i think the sector dynamics are probably improving at this point of time balrampur with its distillery operations and with the 160 klpd plant being operational i think the kind of sales that one can generate uh, specifically on the distillery part with higher margins and higher realizations uh, i think that is going to abet uh, the overall pnl growth uh, the core business again i think in expectations of uh, the carry over inventory and what realizations balrampur can fetch at 32 32 and a half uh, with inventory at around 31 31.25 i think there is some element in terms of earning stability being maintained and debt equity probably remaining far more uh, uh, equitable at this point of time compared to the others uh, so if anybody is holding on i would clearly suggest hold on to the position well 57% over the last 7 days but let's start wrapping up the markets we're just stay on we'll getting closing thoughts from you banks have been taken to the cleaners the ending about 5% lower for the nifty bank so not the best of shapes for the banking space to be in but let let down and start off with the losers first let down by the likes of axis bank indusind bank and icici bank those are the three top losers axis bank comes back to 325 as weakness in titan today at 863 down about 7% shri cement continues to grind lower i think ultra tech too hasn't had a good day up down about 3% and maruti suzuki is knocking on the doors of 4000 i think briefly slipped below that as well but 4005 or thereabouts is where it is shutting shop the good news is um, if i if we can call it good news really is that aside of of course pharma doing well there are a couple of losers which have just bounced back today so reliance industries do not as high as it was in the pre open session marginally in the green bharti airtel marginally in the green and bajaj finance is not having a very big red day it's just down about half a percent so this is a sign that is some bit of selling which is now getting over uh, passive selling which is getting over in bajaj finance maybe time will tell but for now just trading marginally in the red remember there's a con call uh, from the bajaj finance management i think on the on monday and we'll be interested to hear what they are saying as well but the large caps have been decimated what what about the broader end of the spectrum namin the you know, market breadth has been maintained i think that's a positive sign so it's just even steven for the second day on the trot so broader markets relatively outperforming the front line but before i move on to the details i just want to pull up the intraday chart of kotak mahindra bank i think there was some development which came in on the nsdl website the stock uh, has recovered in the last 5 to 10 minutes of trade so from 1087 being the day low now it's somewhere trading at 1158 i think the fpi limit has come to about 74 which is also a sectoral gap of 74% 
and it's just, I think the ball is in MSCI's court now to include the stock in its index. So on back of that, you did see some bit of recovery for Kodak Mahindra. But coming back to the broader market, Sriram Transport was your top loser among the Nifty 500 index. So as overall as well, we've been highlighting how NBFCs have been weak. 16% cut coming in there. Our RBL Bank was down 15% in trade. And other NBFCs from the likes of Max Financial, Chola Mandla were down between 12 to 13 percent and IT tech as well uh, reason being today's fall was maybe on account of uh, British Airways spending few employees but we still need to get some clarification on that front JSPL down 11 percent in trade then you had stocks like uh, JB chemicals and also something like NCC m and financial which were down and you also had paint companies coming under pressure so Boja paints was also down about seven percent on the gaining side among uh, nifty 500 constituents you had Rajesh exports which was your top gainer gains of 16%. Then you had something like uh, Gujarat Alkali is gaining 14%. Apollo Hospitals also rallied. That was up about 10%. And also stocks like uh, a national fertilizer which rallied about seven to eight percent loris laboratories also rallied about seven to eight percent and the good news is also of course we're ending the day in red it's an extended weekend but volatility was down third day on the trot which can be seen as a positive sign let's see if there is a u-turn in the markets maybe the recovery can be sharper but Davina, in terms of contribution among the nifty constituents today once again the list was dominated on the do downside by the banks Yep, it was. And, you know, just want to highlight ICICI Bank, which is the top loser, followed by HDFC, which is down 35 points, along with HDFC Bank, which is down about 20 points, and Access Bank 2 and Inclusive CCS. All heavyweights at the top of the list. On the gainer side, you have ITC gaining about 23 points, Sun Pharma, Reliance Industries, six odd points, Tipla and ONGC were your top five gainers. Aside from that, I just want to take a quick look at the weekly close on the index. Now, this is uh, the end of the week, it was a truncated week, so you start seeing the figures uh, from last Friday onwards, that is the 28th of March. And since then, uh, you've got uh, a dip of 6.73% in the Nifty index, with the big gains coming in from Hale, 16% for the last five days, uh, the trade. But Bharat's Petroleum, BPCL, which is saw a good day's trade in, I think, the beginning of the week. Uh, Sun Pharma, Sipla, ITC, ONGC were some of the gainers. Some of the losers for the week included the likes of all the banks. So, I mean, uh, with no uh, disparity. And autos, banks and autos. So you had a uh, ICICI Bank, Kotak Mahindra Bank losing 15 to 17%. Maruti was down 13%. Aisha Motors was down 11.5%. State Bank of India, HDFC. The dominant uh, losers were banks and autos. Aside from that, uh, the breadth of the market uh, you know, is positive, 785 stocks advanced, 757 trade in the red. A quick closing comment from you, Mahirish, as we step into uh, you know, Tuesday's session now, because it's a truncated week, uh, anything that we need to keep our eyes out on in terms of even uh, data that you'll be watching? Those are two broad aspects, Davina. I think the way we are looking at the markets at this point of time, I think highly dependent in terms of how this entire contagion uh, news comes out over the next few days and weeks. Uh, and again, I think it's a given that the economic deleveraging that the entire economic system in the world is facing at this point of time, with the numbers that you probably saw in terms of uh, the jobless claims for the US markets, the hit uh, that a lot of industries are expected to face. Uh, and the GDP sheen taken off uh, globally and for respective countries as a whole. I think it's uh, it's obvious that uh, the first half is going to be very, very tricky. Uh, I think as the pandemic gets over, and this is our thought process over the next few weeks, uh, I think the markets will start coming back to realities in terms of uh, how the entire perspective will get played out. And though I think all these numbers will get stated in terms of the price movement, both at the index and the stock uh, levels individually, I think that could be an appropriate time over the next few days or weeks. Uh, as the market probably starts uh, bottoming out, and one really can't predict where the bottom is, but I think next few weeks will give that opportunity to bro probably get into good sectors, good stocks, as we've been discussing. Uh, so till that point of time, my entire thesis has always been, I think, conserve capital, stay on cash. Uh, there is no need to probably rush into the markets uh, at this point of time. But yes, create a watch list of uh, potential winners over the next uh, few quarters where earnings can still hold up. So I think selective on uh, pharma, selective on consumption, and selective uh, uh, on a few of these bank stroke qualitative NBFCs uh, would be the way going forward. We leave it at that. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. And with Thank that, you, it's.
uh, a goodbye from us as well, Neeraj Navneet and the entire team that's put the show together. It's a long week, uh, you know, have a safe week, stay at home. And uh, as the Prime Minister said, on Sunday at 9pm, uh, make sure that all of you guys are on your balconies holding a candle or holding a torch or even your mobile flashlights. That Thank you so much. According to a recent report, women today contribute nearly 74% of real estate buying decisions. This includes 32% of single women buyers across the top eight cities. And finally, women are not just buying homes to live in, they're also investing in real estate. I think real estate definitely is the step above uh, jewelry. So it's my personal endeavor that Puravankara and Provident are the first choice or the first place women home buyers come to buy a home. I think it's that, that feeling of kind of apna yeah. Dekho, dekho, dekho. Naya TV, Papa? dekho. Aha. Got the veggies from Chodu shop? He gives the right rate. Yes, Papa. Decided. 55 inch TV on this wall. Oh, super. I'll write out the check tomorrow. No, you don't. I will. With my own money. Oh, wow. How come? Look at this advertisement. 30% assured returns on investment. I am also going to invest my money. Hmm. So vegetables only from Chotu shop, but investment advice from anyone? Papa, trusting a stranger's advice is never wise. But what about the TV? Soch kar, samaj kar, invest kar, invest kar. How many places can you be at once?